Welcome to Coin Retrospectives, short histories of old coins. Today we're going to be taking a bit of a different tack and attack a broader look at the United States coinage and focus on one denomination rather than just one coin. I either have covered or will be covering all of these coins in their own separate videos. With that, let's have a look at the United States one cent piece. First, we'll take a brief look at where the cent gets its name from. It's from the Latin for 100, centum. This tracks, given that a cent is one hundredth of a dollar. The Latin language has a significant impact on the development of this country, given that at least five founding fathers spoke it. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, John Adams, and James Madison, to name a few. The cent is also called the penny, and the penny gets its name from British coins at the time. We start our journey in 1787 with the Fugio cent, which was the first official circulation coin of the United States. Designed by Benjamin Franklin, the obverse features the word Fugio, which is Latin for I flee or fly, referring to time flying by, and a sundial with the sun shining down onto it. At the bottom, we see the phrase, mind your business, which doesn't mean mind your own business, although you absolutely should, but rather pay attention to your affairs. All of this is meant to embody the notion that you should work diligently as time is flying by. On the reverse, we have the phrase, we are one, surrounded by 13 chain links, representing the original 13 colonies. Since this wasn't a mint coin, it wasn't technically worth one cent, but with a shortage of small coinage with which to conduct transactions, the public used it anyway. The US wouldn't see any official coinage until the Coinage Act of 1792 authorized the minting of said coinage, starting here with what's known as the chain cent. This first coin garnered some negative publicity, as Lady Liberty is described as, quote, appearing to be in a fright, close quote, and some thought that chains on the reverse brought to mind slavery. While they obviously weren't meant to, instead representing the 15 states then in the Union, negative publicity seems to be a common theme with early US coinage. Newspapers could be vocal and fiery when they didn't like a coin's design. Very few of these coins were minted, and only about a thousand still exist today. In that same year, 1793, we got the redesigned flowing hair large scent, also known as the wreath scent. This design also features edge lettering, which reads, 100 for a dollar. The Liberty Cap Scent was the next design, lasting from 1793 to 1796. Liberty's Phrygian Cap symbolizes the cap that freed slaves in ancient times would wear. The design by Joseph Wright, again in 1793, was made a few short weeks before he died of yellow fever, and it's estimated that a little over 2% of the original mintage survived. As such, the 1793 Liberty Cap Cent is one of the most expensive coins in all of the early U.S. coinage. This is probably a good time to address the possible question of why there were so many different designs in the early days of the mint. Designing and minting coins was a tough task. Early mint directors and chief engravers worked with planchets of varying quality, dies that wore unevenly and broke quickly, and so many had to be made leading to many different varieties of the same coin, and worked under the threat that the mint would be abolished at any moment. I mentioned before how newspapers would bash designs, they would also attack the mint for costing too much money to operate. As Walter Breen puts it, quote, these were the mint's darkest days, close quote. After 1794, we saw the draped bust scent, which is the first one I'll be able to show here in person. In 1808, we saw the classic head large scent. While in 1816, we saw the coronet liberty head scent, also known as the matron head large scent. And finally, from 1839 to 1857, we had the final large scent, the braided hair liberty large scent. Facing a copper price spike, the mint in 1854 chose to seek an alternative to the large scent, and in 1856, we got the flying eagle scent. 
which was the first scent to not be made entirely of copper. But proving to be difficult to strike, the Indian head scent began production in 1859. But also proving to be difficult to strike and facing nickel shortages due to the Civil War, the mint changed the composition to mostly copper slash French bronze in 1864. In 1909, with the centennial of Abraham Lincoln's birthday fast approaching, President Theodore Roosevelt authorized the minting of the Lincoln scent. The reverse features two stalks of durum wheat, the same kind used to make spaghetti, and thus became known as the wheat scent. Another metal shortage due to war occurred in 1943, and thus the mint used steel for scents in that year. But proving to degrade faster, they swapped back to bronze in 1944. In 1959, ostensibly to commemorate Lincoln's 150th anniversary of his birth, the reverse was changed to display the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. In the late 1970s, the price of copper was rising and it became necessary to change the composition of the one cent piece yet again. Aluminium scents were proposed but quickly shot down, although approximately 13 examples survive today. Eventually, it was settled in 1982 that the new penny would be made of copper-coated zinc. 2009 saw the bicentennial of Abraham Lincoln's birth and the centennial of pennies bearing his likeness. Four special designs were produced, each detailing the late president's life and legacy. The next year in 2010, the reverse was again redesigned to feature a union shield. The scent, to quote the Presidential $1 Coin Act of 2005, shall bear an image emblematic of President Lincoln's preservation of the United States of America as a single and united country. Of course, all good things must come to an end, and as costs continue to rise and the purchasing power of the cent diminishes, there have been calls to end mintage of the one cent piece. Perhaps eventually this will happen, but as for now, the cent continues to be minted and left in gas station parking lots around the country. And that wraps it up at our look at the history of the United States one cent piece. If you found this video informative, do please consider subscribing. I post new videos every Sunday detailing the history of a new coin. And if you have questions, comments, etc., you know what to do. Leave your two cents in the comments and have a great day.